Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to another high level spectate video. I just put objective timers up over there if you want to look when dragon and stuff is spawning. Uh, but today we're watching Darius. I was going to watch a Jace game, welcome but I'm recording this so close to the patch day that ranked players have only had one day um to play games so we don't have an abundance of games to choose from um so there wasn't really any good jace ones that i could find but the other champion in my mind was darius and the, the answer and the question we're kind of seeking is can you play darius right now like just legit and i will say i have i am recording this after a stream session i did just play a game of darius it started really bad i was against a tam kench but i did manage to recover my game the reason why I'm telling you this and be like, hasn't that a spoiler for a video? I stopped recording. The, the early game went that bad. I was like, this is, I need to stop recording. It will help me concentrate a little bit more. And we did. And I recovered my game a bit and we ended up winning the game. But the early game was really bad. And we were against the meta Tam Kench. Now, arguably Tam Kench is just busted right now. But the other tanky top laner similar to Tam Kench that just builds tank but does a lot of damage is Dr. Mundo, which is in this game here. So I thought it was a, a good kind of comparison just to see how can a Darius do. Uh, because I will be honest, you know, we're, we're doing the Try Hard series. It's starting. It hasn't gone off to the best foot, if I'm completely honest. But um, I do miss Darius. People, you know, in the Champion Pool video, uh, when I was doing that live, the amount of people that, you know, in the live twitch chat was saying where the hell's your darius like it's one of your best champs and he is darius has always been one of my best champions it's because i just don't think he's great like why did i play him earlier it's because like what do you play against tam kench and that's what i was like what do you play and i was like maybe darius and no apparently not unless i just played it poorly which i think i did play it partially poorly but it was just very hard to deal with but let's watch a one of the best so who is this player? This is uh, by the website League of Graphs. Not sponsored. It's just the website that has the rankings, etc. Uh, this is one of the best EU West players of Darius. So I actually can say they are number two. Uh, the, the, the second best uh, Darius on EU West. They are currently master with a 62% overall win rate. On, on Darius specifically, they're a Darius one trick in essence. So 140 games of Darius with a 62% win rate. And then their next champion is set 14 games, 21% win rate. So that to me is the ultimate definition of a one trick. Really good win rate, 62% in 140 games. And then the next champion has 21% win rate. So yeah, so we should see some good Darius play. Uh, this player is a smurf. It, it is it is quite obvious. Their account level is level 67. Um, no ranked history, I think, from last season. And weirdly enough, no skin. Like, even if you're not a big per skin purchaser, if you're a one trick or something, you're likely just to have a Darius skin, for example. So the fact that it doesn't, it kind of adds to it being a smurf for me anyway. But it's definitely a smurf. Uh, so I don't know what their other account is or anything like that. Um, it does, there is a, a quite common thing uh, that some people have one trick accounts. That if they love Darius, cool that's their main account and they're in master or whatever it may be he might have a generic top lane account that could be in diamond one or diamond two that's not completely like out of the norm uh, for some one tricks just to keep a general skill level of other champions as well but uh yeah so so far the lane has been pretty standard the one thing that i have been a little bit surprised about is the mundo is acting very passive so does respect that darius uh, obviously, the passive in the early game, if it procs, it gives Darius a lot of AD in comparison to the early game. But I, I think the Mundo has played a bit too passive, if I'm completely honest. Mundo is scary, and in modern day league, you'd be surprised how much damage and tanky the Mundo would be, even at, let's say, level 3 or level 4. Um, as for scaling, I'd imagine a Mundo would... I don't know. I just think in my mind, I don't think Darius has ever been the best tank killing uh, bruiser top lane or whatever you want to call him juggernaut in the world. Yes, he has true damage, but he doesn't have any percentage health or anything like his dot. His bleed is just physical damage. It's not percentage health. His ultimate that does. Oh, there's a ghost. So Darius has just popped ghost. He's got the Mundo passive, I think, but that's it again. The Mundo passive. Oh, maybe he popped it with a W. I'm trying to think. Would, would would Darius W pop Mundo passive? It might. There's the E. It's popped the passive. Make sure, again, a big tip just generally against Mundo. Don't let him pick up the capsule from his passive if you can help it. He loses, if memory serves correct, 
7% of his health when he uses the capsule. And if he goes picks it up, he gains 8%. He actually heals a bit from actually the capsule. Um, obviously, just you might be doing damage to him in the meantime, so he might lose health overall. But yeah, try not to give him it. And obviously, it makes the cooldown half when he picks it up as well. So yeah, do your best you can not to let Mundo get that. Darius is going to go back though. And obviously, yeah, we see a little bit of aggression from him, but nothing major to lead to a kill. It has led him to have a, an okay farm lead at the beginning of the game. I'd imagine both of them are going to use this time to go back right now. Uh, obviously, Darius not running TP, so he has to run to lane. But to be honest, I'd expect Mundo to run to lane as well. Don't waste your TP. If you don't have to use your TP, your tower isn't under pressure, don't do it. The lane right now is in the middle. You know Darius is running to lane because he doesn't have to have TP. So why would you TP as Mundo? There's no point. Save it for something else. You know as Mundo... If something crazy happens in mid or bot or dragon, you can TP, Darius can't. So you can kind of have that teleport advantage over a Darius um, a lot of the time. And that is one of the negatives to Darius is he is actually quite reliant on taking Ghost over teleport nowadays to stick on people. Um, meanwhile, bot lane, they get a first buddy. And yes, that is a Hyma bot lane. Uh, but Diana's got a return kill on the Nautilus. Talon is also down there, obviously part of the, the standard meta. But you can see in mid lane, it's a Lucian mid, which I'm not incredibly fond of, as people know. But he is doing a great job having that big farm lead in the early game, which is what you want a Lucian to do. If, if you're going to play a Lucian, you're going to have a Lucian, especially in a solo lane, you want him to do this. A double farm lead at six, seven minutes into the game. That's great. Uh, that's going to be very hard for Talon to recover, to be honest. But anyway, this is now this side. Bit of a weird cue by Darius. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, runes, we can have a look at those while nothing major is going on. Uh, Conqueror, Triumph, uh, Tenacity with Last Stand. And then he's gone Sorcery, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, all for movement speed. And then Attack Speed to help with his passive, I guess. Attack Damage and Armor. So those are the runes if you are at all interested in them. So I, part of me is surprised Darius is pushing this at all. Um, it's going to be staying relatively in the mid here, but that is now pushing a little bit. If Mundo wanted to let that cannon minion live a bit, but he didn't, um, they could have held it a bit longer. Meanwhile, Hyma dies bot lane. Dyna gets another kill. They do get a return kill mid lead in bot lane. So a lot is happening in bot lane. Uh, but obviously we are watching the island of top lane because, yeah, that is obviously the role that I want to main again. Uh, I have been playing it a lot recently, but it has led to some of the frustration points that top lane has always had um all i'll say is I, I think in upcoming content you'll see me playing a support game and i play support and then my top laner feeds like crazy and then the next game i play top lane and then my bot lane feeds like crazy it's like really uh, so darius goes for a little bit of a surprise all in and that is sometimes how you actually land cheeky kills on darius i've done it from time to time if you've ever watched me play against a trindamir how does a Darius counter Trindamir? A lot of the time, it's that surprise. Boom, you're dead. Like, they just don't expect it. And that's what that Darius just attempted. Mundo, unfortunately, heals a bit. Again, the way of new Mundo, remember, they changed him from old Mundo. Old Mundo, with his ulti, used to take, I think, 20% total health damage or current health damage or something along those lines. And then he'd heal. Current Mundo, there is no take off. Uh, it's an initial heal. There is no penalty to use his ultimate anymore. Um, so that's where Mundo can just like, oh, I'm survived. I'm fine. Where old Mundo, sometimes ulting would then get you killed before like you, you initially take the damage. They can kill you then before the healing starts properly kicking in. Um, so yeah, new Mundo, that is obviously quite nice for him. So anyway, uh, Darius is going to do the scuttle. It's a good thing to do if, if you don't think your jungler's got any priority on it right now. Or if you just need a little bit of extra gold, you may as well take it. Vision is great. Uh, Vision is one of the most underrated areas in terms of improvement for players in League, I'd say by far. Uh, Phage and Sheen purchase for Darius. I presume it's a Triforce game. Triforce seems to be the item that uh, Darius is now going. Meanwhile, Talon gets an assistant bot lane. You can see he is... This is this is literally the perfect example of the meta. Talon is roaming bot lane while his mid lane is getting crushed. He's half farm. He's still going to keep roaming. Like That is the ultimate example of season 11 mid meta. All right. <clears throat> so Darius clearing out top lane. He, again, he doesn't probably want this to be sitting on his tower, by the way. Although, you know, hey, he could free farm, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't really want to. Uh, he's already got a big farm lead. He wants fighting. Um, and he wants Mundo to be in his lane. 
So I'd expect this Darius to go for another all-in. He's got Ghost. He's got Flash. I'd expect it. Here again, like magic, the all-in is happening. Mundo is trying to get away. He's ulted, but the ult is maybe too far gone. Ooh. Really? I'm actually surprised Darius didn't properly all-in that, if I'm completely honest. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Mundo will be on the back foot now, though. All Darius used was Ghost, so he does still have Flash, but obviously so does Mundo. Um, but generally, if Mundo is flashing away, Darius could follow the Flash. I don't think that Darius has got the strength to die of the Mundo. He doesn't have ulti right now, which, you know, maybe, but I think it would be very difficult. Mid lane, big fight happening. Diana goes down to the Nidalee. Again, quite rare to see a Nidalee, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I would somewhat maybe call Nidalee a high rating jungle pick. Uh, it's very high risk, high reward. One of the ultimate examples of that. Um, she's kind of like, in a weird way, think of Nidalee kinda as an AP Shaco. And I know people can play AP Shaco, but like, she's early game and she's snowball-esque. If she doesn't snowball, she can really struggle to do anything, much like Shaco. So yeah, she has kind of that similarity with Shaco at least. Uh, so Dragon Slade from, um, blah, blah, blah. Red team, there we go. And Killing Spree Jin. So this this Heimer is struggling. 0-3 bot lane. Farm-wise, he's doing not too bad, but he is behind. Uh, Talon was roaming bot lane again, by the way. But it was a 1v1 kill for the Jin. But so far, again, this high rating spectate has what the hell nothing's going on. To be honest, this video probably's title is Can you play Darius at the moment? Or something along those lines. This is what I'd expect for most Darius games. Is old Darius in the current in, in the meta used to be I could what the hell was that hitbox? Uh you can snowball, you can try to force it, you can get kills. The current way of season eleven is quite like people get stronger in the game, you know, than ever before early. Meanwhile, he's getting a gank, has the E on him, and there you go. Like that's the point. Mundo can just walk away when he doesn't have his passive be used early. Um but because, like, Mundo has gone back. If you look at his items, he's got a Bramble and a Bammies. It's so hard for Darius to kill this Mundo. Like, it's practically impossible. He can come close. He just can't quite get the kill. And that's going to be most of the lane phase for this example. But what Darius can try to do, and I think what you have to try to focus on as Darius, is you have to win lane by not killing. Like, sure, get a kill if you can. But you're not roaming as Darius, really. You're not going to go to bot lane like some top laners can. You're focusing on the 1v1 top. He might look for a roam here because there is a weird fight happening. But for the most part, you're looking to build a farm lead. You're building a XP lead and you're trying to get their tower. Like That's, that's in essence how you're playing Darius at the moment. Uh, the old style of Darius getting a kill at level 2, snowballing, snowballing. I think that's less apparent, less likely. Um, and obviously pe some people say like, oh, what happens if you are playing Darius into more of a, not a tank top lane and what happens if you're playing into a normal bruiser like him you're playing into a camille or you're playing into fiora aurelia all of those again darius has had some more struggles compared to some of those um darius obviously synergized amazingly well with the old stride breaker he's not as good with the new one um, so that's why a lot of people don't run stride breaker this could be the kill opportunity mundo is given the darius here we go one more auto then ult and then still needs... Oh, there we go. He finally got it. So it's taken till level 10, level 11 to finally get it. And really, Mundo gave that to him. Let's be honest. If you think about it, Mundo uses Flash previously. Mundo didn't have ultimate up. It just came up on cooldown. So why did Mundo kind of overextend, if you want to say, with that Darius nearby, without having ult, without having everything? It That was a mistake. And not Triforce. He's actually gone Divine. Okay, so this may be the slight variance because it's a Mundo. Divine Sunderer, as if you don't know, I may as well say, is a tank killing item. So after using an... Okay, if you can stay on the screen, that'd be great. Ah, after using an ability, your next attack is enhanced uh, with an additional 12% max health physical damage. Obviously, this will get... Armor is going to affect. But 12% max physical health damage. So Mundo, who naturally has a lot of health, this is just to help kill a Mundo. I think naturally a lot of Darius's are going into Triforce. Some still do Stride Breaker, by the way, but, but for the most part, Triforce seems to be very popular. But maybe, again, maybe this is where I went wrong. Um, to be fair, I was losing lane before the Mythics came about. But when I was against Tam Kench, maybe, maybe Divine Sunderer would have been a better purchase than um, 
D Triforce that I bought. Well, yeah, Divine would be better than Tri. Possibly. All right, so... Um, good lead. He gets his first kill. And there we go. We're off to the races. Meanwhile, Lucian, by the way... Oh my god, look at that health. Gets his first solo kill on the Talon in the whole game. So even though this huge farm lead has happened, the Talon has hardly been in mid... So they actually haven't been fighting each other that much. That Talon, by, by the way, used both summoners and Lucian just scrapes the kill. That is, I would say, quite unfortunate for the Talon. Darius is doing a rotation over to mid, maximizing the chance of I can actually get a tower here and it's first blood tower. He just got first blood tower. Mundo, the one with TP, is staying top lane. And what I like about this Darius, he, he, he seems a similar maybe player to me. He's come for Dragon from top lane. At 16 minutes into the game, he's pinging. You can see that. He's pinging for Dragon. He has just given up. Near, he's probably going to give up his top lane tower because he's like, I want Dragon. I respect that. Meanwhile, nice engage. Good damage. They get the kill. High turret with the Diana ulti. With, look at that heal. That was Conqueror heal, by the way. Like, that's mad. They do get it lovely with then an extra kill for Darius. Talon's in the area. Nice Q prediction. And I think Talon is actually going to go down. He does. Darius is alive. Mundo... Doesn't have teleport, so he's staying top lane. Lucian in this time has just stayed mid, free farming. And Darius has got himself a double kill red buff, and now he can rotate to the dragon if that's what he wants to do. Really good Darius play. So this is the thing to say when I said in the early game, lane phase, Darius isn't going to go bot lane. But because of season 11, uh, what has been one of the biggest things of the season, games are shorter. Um, I don't know about you guys, but there's been so many metas of League that has changed timings of the game that we used to, and if you didn't play a long time ago, a few years ago, the average game length did get to 45 minutes. And because the average game length was 45 minutes, we did have hour-long games pretty regularly. Like, that was just part of League of Legends. Riot have sped everything up. Riot don't want 40-minute games, 50-minute games, because they, again, Riot have all the data. That's what you have to realize. They have the data that probably is... The longer the games are, the less interest the player base has or less people play the game or something to that degree. So it's a snowball meta. They've made the game faster. The items are stronger on purpose to make the game end quicker. So the average game length at the moment, I think, is around 25 minutes. It's very quick. So um, having a Darius roam at 16 minutes isn't exactly early lane phase anymore. So a Darius at 16 minutes will be looking for those opportunities and should be if you're doing well. Meanwhile, oh, lovely E by Darius gets the Talon. Very nice to see. Again, good use of your utility in your kit, not just your damage. Lands the E midair on the Talon, getting the kill on him. Really good to see. Uh, Norlis gets the, the Mundo passive, so he's now going to be on the back foot. Enemy team here. Mun oh, enemy is on the back foot. They have all here. Boom, one kill. Let's keep going. Can they dive? They're going for it. Triple! Triple Q! Oh! He's going to go down, but he played that really well. They will get a few more kills. The Darius Dot gets that kill also, and Jin gets a kill but dies. Triple kill Darius. That Q flash was perfect. It was really good. The dive, obviously, why it didn't go really, like, why did he die? They're diving. He's low health, so, like, he played it really well. He landed his passive on all three of them, so you can't hope for much more. And as I've always said, sometimes in League of Legends, a death sucks you don't want to die but sometimes it's for the greater good that darius kind of sacrificing himself there getting the triple q damage applying his passive that was worth like that that just straight up he wouldn't have minded too much that death sure you avoid it if you can obviously it would have given a shutdown to somebody diana got a shutdown for 450 gold but it's not too bad um so yeah Really good clean Darius play. 7-1-1, by the way. So even though, and this is what I also want to make clear, is can you play Darius at the moment? Yes. But don't expect Darius really to be the same as what he was. He's not that snowboarding lane phase anymore. You're playing Darius to win lane still, but not maybe snowball. But this is the area of the game that now Darius needs to excel at. It's mid-game. So now that you're, you've built that farm lead, you've built that like lane lead, maybe not by kills, but you've built a bit of pressure lead and you're ahead of the mundo, then you go for that roam to dragon. Then you go for that triple kill, whatever it may be. Like That's, I think, how you have to play Darius in modern day. Hello. Two people try to kill the Darius. Lands his Q. With then the ult does go down, doesn't get the ult off. So, again, that does still show a Talon that's had not had the best of game. A Diana's doing okay. Those two can still kill him. Like, he's still vulnerable to two assassins. Um, you know, he's got, he's got okay items, but... 
yeah, he's vulnerable. So that's not to say you're an absolute god. Even being 7-1 on the champion, you're not completely like, I'm going to wreck everything. Come at me. Sure, in a clean 1v1 fight, there's probably nobody on the enemy team that can take him on right now. But that wasn't a clean 1v1 fight. That was two assassins waiting in a bush for a Darius. So you also have to expect that. Especially this Talon, that's been generally his playstyle the whole game. He's sacrificed mid for roaming, which again, that is the current meta. But, you know, Darius will probably be a bit annoyed for that death, but he's not going to be, like, distraught over it. Be like, ah, oh, whatever. I just have to be a bit more careful moving forward if I don't have vision of Diana and Talon. And to be fair, with Bramble now, like, the tankier the Darius gets, he's got the damage from um, his items already. He doesn't really need to build any more damage, to be honest. Um, he's just going to get tankier, and then that's less likely going to happen, because what counts as assassins? Tanks. So, yeah, especially tanks that do damage. Meanwhile, Mundo could be in trouble here. Uh, maybe not. If Darius had Ghost, I would have actually expected an all-in from Darius there. But he doesn't have Ghost. It's nearly coming up in 20 seconds. But they are potentially sandwiching him. Nidley's in the area. They've Lucien's in the area. He does have Flash Up, does the Mundo, by the way. So if he gets away, he doesn't. He does a bad Flash. Not quick enough, I would actually weirdly say. Enemy coming. Darius is blocking the Diana. Lucien ult, lovely damage. Norlis also kind of off by himself a bit but that's okay no one can get all in and there will be probably just a disengage of some like it's going to calm down push the wave maybe look for the tier two you push the again whoever pushed the mid that was good timing probably the hymer did that so yeah not bad and now they can open up the tier two with the rift herald they probably want to arguably they use the rift herald early because now the rift is nearly dead they might have been able to just get the tier two and now use the rift here but it should still get its charge Bam, it does. They're not going to kill the tower, and these towers do regen naturally, but still, that's not bad. And it gives you your pressure for dragon. So, overall, it's fine. Um, hopefully, so far, this video has answered if you are, like, at all interested in Darius. Like, can you still play him? The answer is yes. So, like, well, what, this, what does this do for me? I played Darius earlier. I still have interest in the champion, especially his new skin coming out is really cool. So, maybe I'm looking to play a bit of Darius, but... Again, you have to, at least for, if you've already been a Darius player, potentially, you need to shift your expectations. You used to play Darius to stop the lane. Maybe you can't do that right now in current meta. Again, maybe you can. And I will say, maybe if you're against a Renekton, <clears throat> it's fairly similar to what the, you know, an old matchup. Maybe you can stop a Renekton if he makes a mistake early. And you can go for that snowball playstyle of Darius. I just say it's more, uh, it's more unlikely to happen at the moment than anything else. Where that used to be the likely case of Darius. That's why people hate Darius. It's like, Jesus Christ, how do you, how does he lose lane? Meanwhile, the two assassins seems like they those two are like just working together continuously. By the way, um, Heimer gets one. <laughs> Diana, again, it's just inevitable, and she's dead. So uh, yeah, the two assassins, Talon and Diana, again, they I don't think they can technically be duo queue unless they're in Diamond One in a Master game. Uh, but they seem to just be sticking together and assassinating one person. So Lucian went down, but now both of them are dead and it opens up Baron pressure. So arguably not worth for them to do that, especially with one of them being the jungler. Um, you might be thinking this is a bit of a weird Baron. It is, to be honest, um, without Heimer. If you had Heimer here with his turrets, it'd probably be fine. But considering Heimer's just stuck in mid and got kind of pushed away or whatever, yeah, a little bit weird. Um, anyway, Nautilus ulted the Jin. He's going to go for him. Can he get to him? Probably not. Mundo's just going to block it, and that'll be the end of that. It's a little bit messy, I would say, by red team completely, if I'm, well, if I'm completely honest. Uh, Darius going to just walk away. Goldwise should have a decent amount. He has got 1,700. 11,000 gold, by the way, this Darius has got, but compared to the 8.1 of Mundo, <clears throat> that should be near enough. Yeah, the biggest lead in the game, comparatively. So, like, a 600 gold lead here, 700 gold. This is the next one, just on about 2,000, where, where Darius is close to 3,000. So top lane, biggest diff at the moment. Obviously, you know, <clears throat> Darius is... Well, Mundo's actually caught up in farm because he's been side laning for a while. But Darius is 821, Mundo is 031. So that's where a lot of the gold is, obviously. All right, what's going to happen now? So Diana might look for an all-in. Nope, Nidalee's looking for the all-in. Um, now Diana's looking to turn it. Nidalee didn't jump away. And now they're potentially getting caught, but Darius is here. Ooh, Diana did not want to do that. <laughs> One death. Here we go. Now the Darius needs to go for it. Can he get to the Jin? This is going to be the problem of Darius a lot of the time, especially with a lot of the items. You're watching the problem. But he gets to him. 
He's disconnected! That has to be the worst time in disconnect I've practically ever seen. Lucian gets there though and will pick up a kill. What timing was that? He actually would have killed the Jin, I think. Oh, that was really bad timing. So it does show in Master people do still have technical difficulties every now and then. Uh, remember a few weeks ago? I did. My power line adapters, which is my internet, to my PC, they died. I had to buy new ones, but yeah, they died. So like, technical problems do happen. Uh, they are very frustrating, obviously. Whether you're the person that's experiencing them or the person that has, you know, the teammate that's disconnected. But they do happen from time to time. The only thing I would say, what Riot tend to say, is if you disconnect once, God, once a year, it's not going to be a problem, right? But if it's a habit, if it's like your connection is just pretty damn bad and it's a it's a very common thing for you to disconnect, what Riot generally will say is ranked probably isn't your thing. Uh, because again, if it's I disconnect once a day or once a week even, you are putting other people's racing on the line knowing that your internet is likely to disconnect. And that's a bit... That's a bit touch and go, I would say. Um, but yeah, for one disconnect, it's not a big deal. Obviously, that disconnect, he reconnected near straight away. Not a huge deal, but you, arguably he would have killed Jin. And if he killed Jin, maybe then his team could have gone, done Baron or something. So it's not good, obviously. But yeah. So 921 Darius. Completed his Thorn Mail, by the way. Third item. Obviously, naturally, a anti-heal item against a Mundo is always going to be needed. Um... And yeah, just the tank. Like, people say, why didn't you get the damage one, Huz? Tanky's good. You've got a Talon on the enemy team. You have a Jin on the enemy team. Armor's good against those as well. So naturally, Thornmail is most of the time on a Juggernaut Bruiser. Thornmail's going to be better than the AD equivalent, whatever that one's called. So, yeah. I mean, in some games, you can probably get away with buying the AD one. But in most of the time, the Thornmail's going to be better. Yeah, by the way, Lucy in 100 farm up on the Talon, who's not really been farming the last, like, five to ten minutes, to be honest. And I don't really blame him. If he's grouping with a, with a Jin, the Jin's going to get all the farm, not the Talon. And the Dragon has been started. So the enemy team has to try and stop this. Look at the loose. Lovely. Look at that ult damage. I'm telling you, man. This is the new, like, becoming the build on Lucian, I think. <clears throat> we saw it a while ago. But the only difference, the one we saw, I think, had Mirror Mana. But it's this item. That item is mad on Lucian ult, and it actually, it seems that Lucian, when it comes to who he doesn't scale very well, he still doesn't scale well comparatively, but his ultimate, it's its an ultimate defined build. That seems the way to play Lucian at the moment, and that doesn't seem too bad. So that's good. Again, it's good that people are finding ways to play the champion to make it work, if people enjoy the champion. And obviously Lucian himself is also getting a mini rework soon to actually give him scaling. And it seems that Riot are trying to take him away. And some people might not like it, but Riot in their article or whatever said on the announcement, they're going to try and take strength away from mid Lucian and try to actually make him an AD carry again. Um, so he's actually getting a new passive that makes him do more damage if he's been buffed by an, an, a, a friendly champion. So if a Nami, for example, does something to you or Lulu, he's actually doing more damage. So people will be like, you should probably play him in bot lane. And I think they might be taking away some solo strength somewhere as well. So the, the 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 duo assassins, man, these two, they keep doing the exact same play. They just work like this is where I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if they are actually duo Q because it's they're just doing. Oh, is he disconnected again? I actually think he's disconnected, or is he is he tanking the turret on purpose? Darius, oh, he's gone again. He dead. So again, does show this guy, he's in master and he's disconnected. Maybe it's just a bad day for him. He's never had one before, or maybe this is common. I don't know. He's reconnected, but that just cost him a death. And you know, in this is a game that the game is going well. Imagine if the game is insanely close and he disconnects Baron fight. That's game lost. Like that's the kind of point that people have to kind of, you know, sometimes you do have to kind of take a step back and kind of go, Jesus, my internet, it's not good for ranked. Obviously, a very talented player. I don't know if he disconnects all the time. Wow, Mundo got owned. I don't know if he disconnects all the time. This is obviously the first game I'm ever watching of this Darius. And we've seen him disconnect twice. One cost him killing the Jin, And one got him killed under tower. So it's not good, is it? So the game might come to an end here. But a 9-3-2 performance on Darius. And honestly, it's it's what I wanted. It's, it's the show. It's not really a snowball from lane phase anymore. It's more of a snowball from mid-game. That's the strength of Darius. You group in mid-game, 
you know, on average, I'd say like 16 to 20 minutes, you should be looking to start grouping as Darius, go for that dragon fight, go for that rift fight or whatever it may be, then use your strength that you have at that stage of the game. And that's how you play him. So that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And the answer is yes, you can play him, but it's just a bit different than it used to be. If you guys enjoyed, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. I will probably do another challenge to spectate in the next week or so. I do want to get a Jace one done just to see how pl people are playing Jace currently, because I do want to play a bit of Jace myself. Uh, but yeah, like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.